Inquiring minds want to know, can you still build wealth through real estate investing today? We're going to have this conversation with the one and only Anna Kelly. Anna, I don't know about you, but I get this question all the time. Can you still build wealth in real estate today? What do you think? Yes, you absolutely can. Um, there are challenges. It's hard. You've got to do the work and you've got to be patient. So I'll just open with that. Um, I still know people that are still doing deals, mm -hmm. that are still making money. Um, I think one of the important questions to ask is what is your definition of wealth? Mm -hmm. um, not can you or can't you, but what is your definition of, of wealth? What are you trying to do? Are you trying to grow your income and cash flow? Are you trying to grow assets and value and appreciation for the future? Those are two different markers of wealth. And I would say that some of those markets are some of those markers are more challenging than others in different markets, but it's still definitely possible. You've just got to really know what is it you're trying to accomplish, income or growth. And then where do you need to go? What asset classes, what part of the country are going to give you the best opportunity to still do deals and still grow that wealth, even in a challenging environment? Yeah, I think that's right. I think that I think when you look, when you zoom out, right, building wealth in real estate, it's I mean, just zoom out. You can you can look at the charts and see uh, that it's there. The, the thing that I've come to appreciate after 25 years of this is there's so many ways that you can start. And I think a lot of people, right, they just go, hey, you know, I'm going to go that way. And again, I'm very clear, right? I'm a very focused individual. But I just want people to realize one of the reasons I wrote my second book, 15 Conversations with Real Estate Millionaires, is there's so many ways to do it, right? That book has 15 different stories of people that did it different ways, right? One of those in there is Meet Kevin. Meet Kevin from, you know, YouTube fame, 4 million or a million or whatever he has subs. But he started with a 203K loan, right? One of the one of the most interesting stories I have from when, when we were on cruises, we, we were on a crystal cruise, which is a stupid high-end six-star cruise. And we met a couple that flipped in Beverly Hills. What did they do? They found a fixer-upper. They moved into it. It was their primary home. They did a live-in flip. Uh, and they sold it for usually half a million dollars or more in profit. Why is that important? Well, when you live in something for two years, there's this unique tax code thing that says you could sell it and get 500 grand tax-free profit. Think about that. Yes. You know, 500 grand in two years tax-free. That's like a million dollars. Yes. Right? Like probably more like 800 grand, right? With the ladder tax scale, maybe 850. But still think about that. That's like $450,000 a year in income to just live in a construction zone. Now, these houses in Beverly Hills are big, so I'm sure they could you know, move it out or whatever they were doing. But it was just, it was mind boggling to me. All you do is you flip one home every two years, right? Every two and a half years. And you could take these crazy ass vacations. I'm like, genius. Now today we have the <laughs> thing of house hacks, right? Yes. If you, if you want to look like live below your means, take your shelter costs, which X taxes is often your biggest expense, make it zero. You want to turbocharge your journey? Do that, right? There's just so mm -hmm. many ways that you could, you know, get started. And, and frankly, you know, I wish that Olivia and I had, had done so. I wish I house hacked a fourplex like you did. I just, I oh, wish yeah. we would have started there. That it was amazing, you know. And and again, it, it it's kind of the the best of many worlds. You live below your means while you're working to create something that's going to expand your means. And you know, for it, it can be both income. Usually, by the time you're house hacking it, you're about break even if you're buying it right. Um, but you're also building equity, um, your mortgage is being paid down and you're building appreciation as you're renovating those units and making them nicer. So, you know, you're able, real estate, I call it an ideal investment, I-D-E-A-L. It's income, tax deductions, depreciation, equity, appreciation, and leverage, right? And so I can't use all of, I can't start from nothing and go into the stock stock market and 10x my money like 10x you know 100 bucks isn't going to get you very much you're going it's going to take a long time right but i can start in a house hack with literally usda 
no money down if you buy a house in a rural area and rural isn't always as rural yeah. as you think sometimes it's just a little smaller suburb outside of a big city um, or three and a half percent down so you can leverage that difference and if you're house hacking at least be building that appreciation so i love that the other thing is you you've got to like you said you've really just got to think outside the box i mean it is true that today is one of the most expensive times in history to buy real estate um, where interest rates and prices are both high, or they have been, you know, the last two years or so as we've all lived through. And it makes most properties negative cash flow if you pay retail and if you get a traditional mortgage with 20% down at today's interest rates, right? And so people all the time say, Am I wasting my time? I can't find anything ca that cash flows. That's because they're trying to do it the traditional way that every retail investor is trying to do it. But if you can do things like one, use other people's money, don't go to a bank, find a private lender. I bought a single family house, Michael, earlier this year in late spring, I think it was April. And I went to a private lender that I've used before and I offered him 6% interest only, which was better than he could get in a CD or a money market. And by having an interest only payment that was low, and I bought it off market direct from seller below retail, I had built in appreciation, built in equity, and I have cash flow because I'm I'm paying a private lender. And guess what? I only put like $10,000 down. So mm. I didn't even have to come up with a 20% down payment. That thing cash flows a few hundred dollars a month. And if I make it a midterm rental or a furnished rental, it would make me a lot more than that. Um, I haven't done that yet because I got a tenant in right away. I was traveling over the summer. I didn't want the, you know, the headache of doing that. Um, but that's just one way is, is think outside the box and look at every deal a couple of different ways. So this is really important. When I'm looking at a deal to first say, is it a deal? Most people and, and ourselves are included, we're going to do something like the 1% rule, some, mm -hmm. something that says, you know, I, I want my rents to be 1% of the purchase price. That's hard to do today, you know, but if you just toss it, you're going to toss every deal and think there's no deals. So you have to then go, okay. What if I changed the levers, the debt levers, change the down payment, change the interest rate, change interest only instead of principal, or I got a really good deal on the purchase price? What if I bargain with the people and I figure out some creative finance deal, right? Those things are really important and can turn a no deal into a really great deal for you. Um, one other quick example I'll, I'll give you as well is, Right now, um, Veterans Administration loans, FHA loans, basically your federally backed mortgages, if you're willing to live in it, like you mentioned the house hack for a little bit, you can assume someone else's mortgage at their 2 or 3% interest rate. I helped my brother-in-law and sister to do this very thing with VA loans. And for the VA only, um, you can actually buy them as an investor, not be a veteran, and assume those loans without living in that property. So I can guarantee you, even at a higher price today, if your interest rate is two and a half instead mm -hmm. of you know six and a half or seven and a half, you can make that deal cash flow and you can do really well. Yeah. And you know, I think there's so many ways you can do it, whether it's midterm, short term, there's there's lots of different ways uh to do it. Um, you know, it's the other thing you could do is you could just have a plan. One of the one of the greatest stories I've ever heard and and um is somebody who joined the military as a teenager. And their plan or vision was every time they changed their duty station, they would buy and, and live in a home. Now they would make mm -hmm. sure that when they left, it had cash flow. Uh, but the idea is she she did that with her family, I think over a decade or so. And you know, now they're financially free because they use and again, VA loans are zero down. Right. So mm -hmm. again, sometimes it's just having a plan. Uh, you know, if you're young and getting started, why not live in a home? It doesn't every home doesn't have to be your forever home. Um, right. There's there's a couple that will be speaking at my Vegas event. Uh, I think they've done seven or eight house hacks in a row and are now financially free. Now, again, they made some crazy choices that not a lot of people would right? living in 300 square feet, you know, this, that, the other. But you can't argue the results. It's just having a plan, being on the same page and just playing the game of Monopoly where you just you just move around the board. Right. The, the saddest thing I can think of is, is playing Monopoly and just collecting 200 bucks. Every time you get around the board, um, yeah, 
Yeah, you, you've got to you've got to collect and own assets, in my opinion. 100 percent. And you have to have to the point of that plan. It has to be a long term plan. If you're a short term thinker and you think that, you know, real estate is get rich quick and I'm just going to flip, you know, a whole bunch of properties in a row and I'm going to make a ton of money this year. The reality is, unless you are extremely good um, and you've got multiple, you know, for example, I have partners and friends who um, do direct to, they, they, they're realtors, they flip properties, they wholesale properties, they um, sell them as turnkey rentals. And even with huge operations, they're struggling to make a lot of money and flips today because, you know, of where interest rates are and where prices are um, and, and supply and demand in certain markets. Sometimes the, the the, the supply is so low that you just can't don't have the volume you need to make those things work. So we got kind of spoiled with a few years where just about anything you did in real estate, Michael, you could make money and you could do it fairly quickly. In, in times of economic shifts like we're going through, it's slower. It just is. And so, yes, you can make money, but you have to have a long-term plan. You and I have talked about this before. Our, it took us about 10 years to really build wealth. And that was like during a hard economic time too, but prices and interest rates were lower than they are today, which definitely benefited us in a different way then than, we, than we're seeing right now. We still may get to something similar, but maybe maybe not. Um, but we had that long-term plan. And so you have to understand if you're just thinking, I can't find anything that I can make money on within a year, so I'm not going to do real estate, you're missing the boat. Like you invest today for your future and you say in the next 10 years, this is where I would like to be both, hopefully both income and appreciation. Again, one of the things we like about real estate is it's easy to create both in the same investment rather than one or the other. Um, but you've got to have that long-term plan. And just like, you know, not that I'm, I'm advocating this necessarily, but, you know, back in my old advisory days, you know, we'd say dollar cost average into the stock market, like no matter what the price, put a little inconsistently. Real estate, if you want to do it right, where you're really going to build long-term wealth, long-term cash flow, you accumulate assets and you just sit on them. You don't try to flip them for fast cash, right? You you buy a property, you hold it over the next 10 years, you've got that mortgage pay down, you've got that appreciation, you've got that cash flow. And you as you're doing it over and over and over again, you're going to have good markets and bad markets in terms of the economy. You're going to do some great deals. You're going to do some deals that don't look that great. But when you look backwards, you're like, man, I thought I overpaid for this. <laughs> this was a steal. I wish I could buy properties for this price that I thought was overpriced back then. So just keep doing the work and you will find deals and you've just got to get creative. But you must think long term because if you're in it for short term gains, you're going to quit. Yeah. It's just it's it's a patience game. It's a grit and determination game. You've got to be in it for the long haul and and expand what you think a good deal looks like to you. Yeah, I couldn't agree with that more. I think I think you're absolutely right. There was a two year, maybe two and a half year period where if you were if you anything you touched turned to gold, just because prices were going up that fast. That is not normal. That's frankly not healthy. Um, right. But we're actually seeing a lot of people wash out now. I know a lot of people that were in the game, those two, two and a half years made made a killing. They're already starting to leave because you're right. There's a lot of people that aren't, the flips aren't selling. They're, you know, they're having to carry it longer. It's just, uh, it's not easy. Real estate investing is not easy. There was a two year window, two and a half year window where it was. That's not normal. That, that, that is absolutely right. not normal. So at the end of the day, I think owning assets, whether it's real estate, business, stocks, whatever that is for you, is the way to get wealthy. It is a journey. It is a 10-year plan. It does take grit. Uh, it's not get rich quick. It's get rich for sure. Uh, that's the game yes. that we're playing here. And uh, Anna, where can people find you? Great. You can find me here on your show. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom. And for real estate coaching and consulting, AnnaKellyInvesting.com. Thank you so much.